This video will be a tutorial on heating and cooling curves, especially the math part. Question number one, calculate the amount of heat needed to change 150 grams of ice at negative 10 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. Letter A, make a heating curve or cooling curve using temperature on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. Label the following on the graph. Dependent axis labeled temperature in degrees Celsius. Independent variable is time on the x-axis and the title of the graph, heating curve of water notices endothermic. So that answers questions four and five. Put the problem in the yellow box at the top just so we know what we're working with so we don't forget the quantitative part. Number one asks for the phases. Number two is the phase change melting or freezing point. Is the other phase change boiling or condensation point? We've already labeled that it's a heating curve and that it's endothermic. And then we need to label the potential and kinetic energy changes that take place. I've adjusted the temperature scale so it goes from minus 10 all the way up to 100 plus. And our first line is to represent the solid phase, and that's what you see down here. Our second line is going to represent the melting point, which is at zero, where the temperature does not change. So it's important to note that temperature goes from minus 10 up to zero. Then it stays the same at the melting point until all the solid melts. Then we go on to the next phase, which will be the liquid phase. For the liquid phase, we can draw a straight line going from zero degrees, the melting point, up to 100 degrees. The boiling point is represented by the horizontal line at 100 degrees. It is not to scale. If this was to scale, the boiling point line would extend for actually six times farther than the melting point line, but you get the idea. And liquid is turning to gas here. They exist simultaneously. Finally, we see the temperature increasing again from 100 up to 110, which is the gas phase. So now let's label the various energy changes that are involved. And let's start down at the solid. Since there's a temperature change, and temperature is the average kinetic energy, we can see that the solid line is an increase in kinetic energy. If we go up to the liquid line, we also see an increase in temperature, so that should also be an increase in kinetic energy. Finally, up at the gas line, we also see a temperature change from 100 to 110 in the gas phase, and that is kinetic energy. The phase change at the melting point, zero degrees for water, does not have any change in temperature, but clearly the ice is melting, so there must be heat involved, and that heat is potential energy. Similarly, if we go up to the boiling point at 100 degrees where the temperature doesn't change, the phase change of liquid to gas also requires heat, and that heat would be potential energy. For letter 1b, it says show the calculations for the following. You notice there are five different stages, if you will. The solid phase, the melting point involves the heat of fusion, the liquid phase, the boiling point involves the heat of vaporization, and the gas phase. So we need to develop equations for each one of these. Kinetic energy relates to temperature. The heat calculation is going to involve cumacat. The heat is equal to the mass, which is 150 grams, times the specific heat of ice in this case, which is 0.5 calories per gram, times the change in temperature. The heat calculation for liquid is also kinetic energy because of the temperature change. So we use cumacat. This time, however, the specific heat is one calorie per gram. And for the gas, there's a temperature change, so that's kinetic energy. So again, we use cumacat, and the specific heat of steam is 0.5 calories per gram. For the calculations of the phase changes or fixed points, and they're fixed points because there's a phase change and the temperature is fixed, it doesn't change. So let's go to solid liquid first. It's potential energy and has a specific name of heat of fusion. So to find the heat, we use Q equals mass times the heat of fusion. And lastly, go up to the boiling point where you have potential energy because of no temperature change. And we use Q equals mass times the heat of vaporization. To determine the quantitative amount of heat, you see that there are five different equations we need to use. Solid, melting point, liquid, boiling point, or phase change, and gas. So let's calculate the heat from solid all the way up to gas. We'll start with the solid phase. So we're calculating the heat from negative 10 degrees to zero degrees, and we'll use cumacat. The mass is 150 grams. The specific heat is 0.5 calories per gram for ice. And delta T is the final temperature, which is zero degrees, minus the initial temperature, 
which is negative 10 degrees. See, we're starting at negative 10, but we end up at zero degrees as the final temperature for this first leg of the heat flow. So we just combine the temperature and we get a positive 10 degrees Celsius. That's important. That indicates the endothermic reaction. And this would give us a heat value of 750 calories. If we convert into kilocalories by dividing by 1,000, we get 0.75 kilocalories. And if we convert that to joules, we multiply by 4.18 joules per calorie, and we end up getting 3.14 kilojoules. Next, we move on to the melting point or the phase change of solid to liquid. So we're calculating the heat at the melting point, which is zero, and that's going to be Q equals the mass times the heat of fusion. The heat of fusion for water is 80 calories per gram times the mass of 150 grams. That gives you 12,000 calories converted to 12 kilocalories. And if again, if we convert by multiplying by 4.181 joules per calorie, we get 50.2 kilojoules. Our third calculation will be the liquid phase where the temperature increases. Notice we're starting at zero and the final temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. To calculate the heat from zero to 100, we're going to use cumacat. The heat is the mass of 150 grams times the specific heat of liquid water, which is one calorie per gram degree Celsius, times the final temperature of 100 minus the initial temperature of zero. That gives a value of 100 degrees for the temperature. The heat required to raise liquid water from 0 to 100 degrees is 15,000 calories or 15 kilocalories. Convert that into joules by multiplying by 4.18 joules per calorie, you get 62.7 kilojoules. Next, we want to calculate the heat of the boiling point phase change from liquid to gas, and we will use Q equals mass times heat of vaporization. Q equals the heat of vaporization of water is 540 calories per gram, and the mass is 150 grams, giving us a heat content of 81,000 calories, which is 81 kilocalories, multiplied by 4.18 joules per calorie, 339 kilojoules, just for this section. Finally, our last calculation will be the kinetic energy that exists from gas heating up from 100 degrees to 110 degrees. The heat is Q equals mass times the specific heat of steam, which is 0.5 calories per gram, times the change in temperature, where the final temperature was 110 and the initial temperature was 100. So you can see that here, which gives us a temperature change of positive 10 degrees because it's endothermic. So the heat would be 750 calories, which comes out to 0.75 kilocalories, or 3.14 kilojoules. Lastly, we need to add all the heats of all five stages together to get the overall enthalpy, or heat flow, from minus 10 degrees ice all the way to 110 degrees of steam. You can see that here. We add all five stages together, and it comes up to pretty close to positive 110 kilocalories, which would be 458 kilojoules if you changed it to joules. That is an endothermic reaction. For the worksheet, part C would be to fill in this chart, which we did in the class notes. You're going to go and use an exothermic reaction to calculate the amount of heat needed to change 25 grams of steam from 110 degrees down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. Basically, everything is going to be opposite of what you just did. Similar equations, except the mathematical sign will be negative for each stage. And you add them all together, you're going to get a negative exothermic heat flow.